In this Excel video, you're going to learn all about the Excel Review tab and ribbon. Let's get started. So this video is one in a series in which we're going to look at each of the Excel tabs and ribbons. So please watch all of the videos in the series. But in this series, we're focused just on the Review tab and ribbon. You can see I'm in a spreadsheet called Food Sales, and it's got quite a bit of text in this spreadsheet. So one of the things that the Review tab can help me do is double check that I've written the text correctly. Let's try it out. So I will just click anywhere in the spreadsheet and then go here to the Review tab and the Proofing group, and then I will just click on the Spelling button. In my case, I got a pop-up. Do you want to continue checking at the beginning of the sheet? Yes. And so it's looking throughout the sheet for any spelling errors. It's noticed that I've combined these two words together, unit price, as one word. So I will go ahead and change it. Same with total price. Spell check is complete. I click OK. And those changes have been made in my spreadsheet. So that spell check is pretty similar to most spell checks. If you have any experience with spell checks, that should look pretty familiar. In addition to changing the errors that are found, you can also just ignore the error once or all instances of the error. You can also add a word to the dictionary. So in some cases, the name of a company or of a person might show up as a misspelled word. Well, in reality, those words may not be misspelled at all. They're just unique to that company or person. And so in those cases, I would add the word to the dictionary. There may also be times when you want to refer to a foreign language word, which again might be flagged as a misspelled word, but you could just add it to the dictionary if you want. We also have some autocorrect options. Spell check complete. You're good to go. It just made all the changes automatically. I'm going to put in another misspelled word, go back to spelling. I want you to also see that you can switch the language of the dictionary, so that may be helpful in some cases. There's also options. If you click on options, there's all sorts of options you can look through to adjust how the spelling dictionary works. I'm going to cancel out of that. In addition to spelling, we have thesaurus. So I'm going to click on bars and then click on thesaurus. And I get a pop-up here at the right, a panel that opens up with some suggestions for alternate words that I could use instead of bars. It thinks I may be talking about alcohol bars, so it's suggesting saloons and taverns, etc. But then it also understands that uh, I might be talking about blocks or rods or obstructions, bands or some of these other options. And so this thesaurus that's built into Excel can really help us to think outside the box a little bit, maybe come up with a better word, and maybe not be too repetitious or mundane in the language that we use. Enough about the thesaurus. Let's move on to workbook statistics. In Excel, you can click that at any point on the review tab here in the proofing group. Just click workbook statistics and Excel will show you some stats about your spreadsheet and your workbook. So here are statistics about the current sheet, one table, 244 formulas, and also the workbook overall. In this case, the workbook consists of just one worksheet or spreadsheet, and so the totals aren't different really, but in some cases they will be. I'm going to click OK. Let's move on to the next group on the review ribbon. It's called accessibility. So this group and this tool have to do with how do we make our spreadsheet more accessible to everyone. Some people may struggle to see colors or certain fonts, or they may not be able to see at all, or it may be very difficult for them to see. And so those are just some examples of when accessibility could really be very important that you check. So I'm going to click on check accessibility and then check accessibility again. Over on the right, I get some suggestions, some warnings, and tips on how to make this better. So Excel thinks I have hard to read text contrast, two examples of it at least. So if I click here, it's giving me some recommended actions, table styles, maybe I should switch to a different table style. And then I have another suggestion here, maybe a different font color. I don't think that necessarily helped. Fill color, that may actually be better. 
I also get some more information below. So I really like this accessibility checker that I find here on the review ribbon. Now, in addition to just check regular accessibility, you can also add alt text or alternative text. So an example of when that could be helpful, if I insert, let's say an illustration and it's a picture, maybe an online picture, I'll do a search for a beach ball, double click to add that image onto my spreadsheet and then I could shrink it down because it's way too big and so now I've got an image of a beach ball and in this case it's just decoration but what if it were crucial to understanding the spreadsheet or enhancing your understanding of the spreadsheet there is the possibility that someone that uses this spreadsheet may have vision problems and may not be able to see the beach ball so what you can do is select the beach ball and then go to the review tab click check accessibility, alt text, and the panel appears here at the right and asks me how would I describe this object to someone who is blind or low vision. Excel tries to automatically generate a description, so a multicolored beach ball. That's actually perfect, but if I want to, I can elaborate more or add more information, maybe something like that. It's also possible just to mark it as a decoration, but I'm happy with this. So I can X out and the alt text is applied to this image. So now anyone using an electronic reader to read the spreadsheet data, they will hear that alt text that I've added. Other accessibility options that we have include this options accessibility. If you click there, you get even more features and options. I'll cancel out. Let's move to the next group on the ribbon. Next we have insights. The way this works is you select some data in your spreadsheet, let's say New York, and click Smart Lookup. Once you've done that, the panel opens up at the right and we get some information pulled from the internet. In some cases, it's information or files that are on your computer, but I can browse down these Smart Lookup results here at the right. I can see a Wikipedia article about New York, the city, the state. I can see that I have a spreadsheet that references New York, actually a couple of them. There are ideas for things to do in New York, some images, and more. So these were all automatically generated ideas, insights that I could use. And if I choose to, I can select any of that data and choose insert link in this case. With images, I could click and choose to copy, and then I could paste it onto my spreadsheet. I'll hold control and tap Z a couple of times to remove the image, but this smart lookup is really cool. It may not be in all versions of Excel, but in some of the newer versions and in Microsoft 365 versions of Excel, you should see that. Next, we have Translate. This is a powerful tool. Again, it may not be in all versions of Excel, but if you click that, you'll get a translator panel that opens up. And because I had selected just the one cell, I'm getting a translation just for the word bars. And you can switch from Spanish to Swedish or whatever you may need. Now, what if I hold control and tap A to select the entire spreadsheet? It looks like I've reached the maximum selection length for translation. So that's not gonna work. So let's say I want to translate much of the data that's in column C. It looks like it's mostly east-west, east-west. But if I select a range, I can then click on translate. I'll set it to translate from English. And instead of scrolling through the languages, you can just type English and then down here type Spanish or German or whatever it may be but there are the results in Spanish so the translator tool can be very helpful very useful our next group is the show changes group if you click on that it will bring up a record of recent changes to the workbook so if you regret making a change that you've made recently you can open this up and you can even click on a previous change that was made and the selected cell will change to go to the cell that was altered it will also tell you who made the change and when I'm gonna close out of the changes panel. Next, let's look at the comments group. Here in the comments group, I can easily add a comment. So I'll just click on a cell, choose new comment. There's my comment. I click send, and now there's a comment in that cell. You can tell that there is based on this little symbol. And if anyone puts their mouse pointer over that symbol, the comment appears. Now that we have a comment, and I'm gonna actually add a second comment as well, and how about a third? So now that I've got a few different comments, I can click to go to the previous comment and it jumps. 
I can go to the next comment. I can show comments. They're all listed here at the right in this panel. And there's even the option to delete a comment. So I'm gonna jump to the next comment. I'll click delete and it's gone. I'll go to the next one. I've read it, it's gone, and so on. You can also reply to each other's comments. And so that's a way you can kind of have a conversation about a spreadsheet or data through comments. A similar tool that we have is over here in the next group, the notes group. I can click to add a new note and I get a little pop-up that appears, something like that. The yellow note is kind of hidden inside this red triangle, but if you put your mouse on the triangle, the note appears. Similar to comments, you can jump to the next note, the previous note, you can show and hide notes, you can convert the note to a comment, and you can edit a note. It's also possible to right-click on a note and choose delete note. Okay, on to the next group on the review ribbon. It's called Protect. And what Protect is for is for protecting either all or part of your spreadsheet from being ruined or changed accidentally. This is especially useful if you share a workbook with one or more other people. If more than one person is using a spreadsheet, there's always the chance that someone will accidentally delete or change important data. So what you can do is you can either protect the whole sheet by clicking this button, or you could protect the whole workbook similarly by clicking a button. And then you could just click OK, and now the whole sheet is protected. If I click on a cell and start typing, I get a warning. Let's try another cell, even a blank cell. I start typing, I can't because the whole sheet is protected. Now the thing is, if a person that you want to protect a sheet from, if that person knows how to use Excel really well, they probably know they can just go to the Review tab, go to the Protect group, and choose Unprotect Sheet, and then of course they can click to change the data. And so if you really want to protect a sheet, what you can do is click Protect Sheet, and then give the sheet a password. I'm just gonna put in hello as my password. I click OK. It wants me to re-enter that password just to make sure I'm spelling it right. So now this sheet can be viewed, but it cannot be changed by anyone unless they click unprotect sheet and type in the hello password in this case. I click OK. Now it's unprotected and can be changed. Now, if you're gonna do this, be really careful. One of my most popular videos on this channel is a video that shows you how to break protection from a spreadsheet. And the reason it's so popular is because people will very often put in a password and then promptly forget what the password is. So please watch out for that. Now let me show you an advanced technique for using the Protect tools. What you can do is you could set up a range of data that you don't want to be protected. You want people to be able to edit that range of data. So for example, the quantity of cookies or other desserts or snacks. I want that to be changeable. So I've clicked and dragged to highlight that range and then I'll go here to the Protect group and click Allow Edit Ranges. I get a dialog box that pops up. I'll click New, and notice that because I had clicked and dragged to already select my range, it's already referred to that range of cells. I could password protect the range, but I'm not going to in this case. I'll just click OK. I will click Apply. And so what I've just done is I've set that range of data, the quantity of snacks, to be editable. Now you might be thinking, well, isn't the entire spreadsheet editable? And the answer is yes. So why did I just specify this one range of data to be editable? Because at this point, I'm gonna click Protect Sheet and the entire sheet becomes not editable, except for this range. So I click Protect Sheet, I'm gonna password protect it, click OK. I have to put my password in again to verify. And now the entire sheet is protected. I cannot change any of this data at all except for the quantity of cookies. So I click on, let's say G3, I'll type in 99, and Excel let me change that number in G3 to 99. Why? Because it's part of the spreadsheet that I chose to allow edits for. At this point, I'm gonna unprotect the sheet, put in my password, and now it's back to normal. So I hope you can see how powerful that could be to protect your data, make sure that only parts of it that you want edited can be edited. If you want to learn more about Protect Sheets or just want a video only on that topic, watch my other videos on protecting sheets.
Okay, we're on to the last group on the review ribbon. It's called Ink. And to show this, I'm going to use a tab that I've added to my ribbon in Excel. It's the Draw tab. Here on the Draw tab, I have a Draw tool, and I can click there to draw right on top of my data. I can change colors if I want to, choose a different tool, and this is basically virtual ink that I'm using. Okay, so now that I've got some ink on my spreadsheet, I'm gonna go back to the Review tab and Ribbon, and here in the Ink group, I can hide the ink. Another option in addition to hide ink is to delete all ink on the entire sheet or in the entire workbook. I'll just click Delete All Ink in Workbook, and it's gone. So there you have it, the Excel Review tab and Ribbon in-depth. Please do watch my other videos on the other Excel tabs and ribbons. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do that a number of different ways. You could click the thanks button below the video, you could support me through my Patreon account, or you could buy channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. A brand new way you can support the channel is to become a channel member. With a channel membership, you'll get some bonus content that is only available for channel members. For example, you'll get some behind the scenes information about my channel and my thoughts about technology and education. You'll also be supporting my channel so I can continue to make these videos. Thank you.